Giraffes? Did he watch the April giraffe cam? Uh, he was asleep, um, and I frankly was. Even if he'd been awake, I don't think I would have let him because, like, I woke my wife up because she'd been one of those crazy people, like, following. I mean, my wife would like, like, hope oh, hasn't happened yet. I'm like, who cares? <laughs> um, and so I woke up on a Saturday morning, and it was like they're like, it's happening. Like, you know, you go to the the, the cam. There's like a leg sticking out. Um, <laughs> Did you watch it? And so I went and woke her up because she wanted to see it. And I'm like, like, I was a little hesitant to do her because I'm like, what? like, this baby's like two months overdue. What if it just like pops out dead? <laughs> oh, like, God. My kid would have been like scarred. So, yeah, no, I wouldn't have done it even if he'd been. Was awake. it two months overdue? Like, I, yeah, I think the, originally they thought it was going to happen in February. Apparently giraffes aren't like people where it's like. Nine oh, they're months. not? No. That's Giraffes weird. are not people. <laughs> this is what I they're just long-necked people. I went to the zoo this week, and there's really not much of a difference. Um, yeah, apparently, it's 14 months, like, give or take a month. So. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So. Anyway, Adam, if you want to switch that light on so people know we're recording, we oh, can get started. Oh, the light's been on. The light's been on. We've been recording. The light's Excellent. on? The light's on. <laughs> the light is on. Adam's there is back. No, Thank there's God. no magical switch that you have to flip to get the light on. <laughs> Somebody who knows what the heck they're doing is here Let's to record. Let's never go through that again. Let's, you can never go on vacation again. It I'm was sorry. really fun to listen to. Yeah, it went I was good. sitting on the plane coming back, and I was like, I'm going to download this on the Wi-Fi and make sure I've got something to do on the plane. Yeah. And like the first 30 minutes, every few minutes, I was just laughing. <laughs> and Kevin's like, what's my... What, it's what weird doing? to listen to your own stuff because... I mean, literally, I either heard or made the joke the first time and still find myself like, ah, uh-huh. we're funny. It's, it's real dumb. Oh, uh, it was fun. That was fun. The simple things. The simple things. Exactly. Red lights. So <laughs> Dylan's playing Mario Kart. I actually hate red lights most of the time. Though. Yeah, right? Yeah. Dylan's oh, playing, you're like legit playing Mario legit Kart right now. I'm on Moo Moo Meadows currently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No one wanted to play So Dylan's me. not going to say anything. He's just going to play video games the entire time, which is That's cool. That's fair. Well, while he's playing video games, we're going to talk about Mario Kart stuff, I'd imagine. Yep, there's some Mario Kart stuff in there. Yeah, the Nintendo Switch sale is doing gangbusters. Yes. Gangbusters, that right? is a word. Like the rumor is they're flying them in to meet I've demand, which crazy, is crazy. Because right? it's much more expensive to do that. It is. I mean, not that it's a cheap system anyway. I mean, they're making money. They're yeah. fine. They're going to make some money. Uh, Call of Duty World War II. Is this a new one thing it that's going to happen? Okay. That's cool because I need to relive that. Hmm. Well, not that I re- lived it to begin with. You were there. Adam was yeah. there for the oh, storming yeah. of Normandy. Well, that's whatever. I've seen Saving Private Ryan plenty of times. <laughs> I've never seen that. Oh, really? It's good. What? Uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. We'll talk about that. And then another Nintendo Portable. And Breath of the Wild. And Breath of the Wild. DLC. Oh, yeah, that thing. There's a lot of like acronyms in that sentence right there. Yeah. B-O-T-W DLC. Yeah, cool. And, of course, a couple of questions, including uh, my cousin Vinny yep. and Cheap Free Stuff. We've got all that coming up. But first, we're going to start with what Dylan is currently playing, literally currently playing. Yes. I'm playing Mario Kart. Good job. <laughs> all right, Nan Clip. No. Um, um, how, how, did you play it on the Wii U? Yes. Okay. How does it compare? Or it, is it really basically the same thing, just you know, portable? I don't really know how to answer that too well, because it's so far removed from playing it on the Wii U from mm-hmm. when it came out. So, yes, yeah, sure, there's technical differences. It is smoother, but I couldn't tell you that. Um, it's a great game. Yeah, it was a great game before. So it's probably it's still, a better game it's now. It's still better. Yeah, I haven't got to the battle mode, which is apparently the the thing the edition. So. Have you played it two-player on, on a Switch, not on a TV? Not. A, I've only played it on the TV other than... Sure. Um, then right now. Then right now, um, but we'll have to we'll have to hook it up yeah, and, and try the battle mode. And, I should bring and an extra Joy-Con like tomorrow, and then we can play three player. Yeah, yeah. I got I have four right here. Oh so. well, perfect. Oh, well, I, I don't need I know to even doing worry about show. that. Um, perfect. But I, I I'm gonna share it, my interesting uh, Mario Kart experience. Excellent. Um, I did get one set of the steering wheels. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're real cute too. They're yeah, far smaller than you little, think they yeah. Are. They're a little smaller than the Wii ones because the Joy Cons are maybe. What do you think? Like six inches across, seven yeah, inches across? About, yeah. Can you hold it in one hand? About six inches. Like oh, you're doing yeah. that. Yeah. You can totally do that. Um, inappropriate gesture I'm doing, but but you just slide the Joy Con in there, and it. I mean, it's fine if because i really enjoyed mario kart wii with the steering wheels like mm-hmm. i really liked playing that i've way. never done it that kind of intrigues me um, but anyway i was playing 
and I was steering, but the joystick's also right there, really easily accessible to your thumb. And so I found myself using the joystick. I'm like, okay, I'll just, and now I'm playing with the joystick instead. But I might, if I like lean, like to be comfortable, then I'm starting to steer to the right. <laughs> so it, it just seemed like Mario needed an alignment. Um, <laughs> his tires were like kind of wonky. I'm like, why am I having to like correct my steering? And then I realized, oh, so it is kind of weird that you can control two different ways at the same time. There's there's a part of me that believes that you could become like the world's bestestest Mario player by like figuring out the right way to do that, like steering one way and then steering like some sort of snap turn. Yeah, I, don't know. I mean, it, I guess if you're awesome, it probably does have some more flexibility than playing with just one input. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Have you only played it with the wheel? Have you played it with just the Joy-Con? Yeah, I, I did just try to play it, and and you can play it with just the this because that was one thing I really did not like about. Uh, Mario Kart on the Wii U is that you had to do steering with the like the back and forth. You couldn't use the actual controller to do. You had to use motion controls to do it. Didn't did you? you? Uh... I think so. Either way, if you didn't, I always did, and it kind of bugged me. So oh yeah, so I, I could be totally. Oh wrong. no, yeah. I mean, you might be right if you were using like if you were of, using a, if, well, a nun, or the, not a nunchuck. A, Nunchuck. The Wiimote. Mode. I yeah. think if you were the using Wiimote. the Wiimote. No, because you could use... I remember I had the nunchuck set up and I was doing it that way. I wonder if it's because I didn't have a nunchuck set up to That it. might be it. That might be it, yeah. Because hmm. I only ever played it on Wii U with the gamepad. Yeah. I never <clears> hooked <throat> anything else up, so I only ever played the Wii U Mario Kart 8 with the joysticks. Yeah, my, my kid always got the joy, the pad thing. It was always so strange, too, because like we'd often play like me, my wife, and him, and my wife and I would be watching the screen, and he'd be playing on the joypad looking at the, the pad. I'm like, it's up there. It's big. He's right, like, no, it's no, on the giant screen. Like, okay. It's really funny how, like, <laughs> how easy it is to, if you have something that has yeah, a yeah. screen on it, you just want to look at it. I mean, it's it. kind of like going to a sporting event, and like you realize if your seats are you know anywhere above row, you know, 50. Yeah. If you get the cheap seats at a basketball game, you're going to spend most of that game watching the Jumbotron, not actually watching the actual players right below it. Yeah. It's crazy. Right. Um, but I think it's definitely worth picking up on the Switch. Nice. Um, did you get it on... Did you get physical or digital? I got the physical. Did you? Okay. Um, he likes to taste each one of his cartridges. Yeah. <laughs> well, I just think it's kind of... The cartridges are fun. I, yeah, they're so tiny. Yeah. I, and I I think my favorite part is the actual size of the case. Yeah. I don't know yeah, yeah, yeah. why. I love the Every size. time I open one of those, I'm like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. Right. Uh, but I don't... It's yeah. it's strange to think that the actual cartridge is smaller than, like, a DS cartridge or, I mean, really any other Game Boy cartridge, but the the, the, the case itself is bigger than, like, old oh. Game Boy ones. They yeah. used to be, like, those, like, four by four squares. It's yeah. real mm-hmm. weird. Real weird. Oh, yeah. Why, why did right? they do that? <laughs> it's, I didn't even think of that. It's marketing. It's it's <sighs> all about product placement it and just where looks they'll fit. good. Yeah. But it for does. some reason, they made the I think they made the perfect size because for some reason, Nintendo Switch game cases look the best on the shelf. They do, yeah. Like, they just look better than... I think the like the normal size cases are too big. Yeah. I think the PS3 had it right when it started getting smaller. <clears throat> It'll be interesting to see like how many people buy physical versus digital. Because the digital, yeah. you know, for Xbox games and PlayStation games, there's a lot of reasons to buy one or the other. Right. Um, just kind of depending on who you are. And, and right now, it's it's like a shocking amount of digital. It's like 75, 76% yeah. digital on those oh, systems. Wow. Yeah. Um, It'll be interesting to see how the Wii affects that. Yeah, I just, I figure that I'll save some space. You mean the Switch. Yeah, the Sorry, Switch. yeah. I'll, I figure I'll save some space on my, my SD card. Yeah. Because um, I did That's pick true. up a 128 gigabyte card. I haven't gotten one yet. Because I sent you guys that link on I Amazon, it, and yeah. they had them for a sale, on sale for really cheap to get 128 gigs. I should have, but I didn't. Um, I'm a loser. So I placed that in there, and, um, but then, you, yeah, just to conserve some space, yeah. and it's kind of fun to actually... Have some cartridges. Mm-hmm. I like it. I mean, I always like physical games. It's just when well, it becomes so easy to have digital games that yeah. I think the difference is too is like I they're small enough that you could carry fifty of them with you. You know, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, you know, this cool little case and you have right. four games. Yeah, it's, you know, so it's not like a CD where they take up a huge amount of space and you know it's all good. Yeah, and unlike our cases that we've got, like they've got a s- slots for what, like seven or eight games in there? Yeah. So it's like you can always have seven or eight games with you. And I mean, who really needs to have seven or eight games right. with them at all times? Right. So. And then you do have some digital ones on there, obviously. So you got a lot of, a lot a lot of flexibility. Um, Adam just broke his microphone. I broke my thing. Adam's. Okay. Uh, and we're my fixed. thing. Is he, he tilting? Microphone. Is Adam tilting right now? Yeah. Is that what's happening? 
I what don't even that? know what that means. I don't. I'm not hip with the cool kids. I don't know. Yeah. What is tilting? I don't. Other than like I, that, I was asking you. Oh uh, no, I was just fixing my pop he's, screen. He's playing pinball. Anyway. Yes. What do you what do you play, Adam? Well, you went on a cruise. So you when played I was, cruising. I did. I played. Um, well, I played some trivia on the on the cruise ship. That was fun. <laughs> um, we played. Was yeah. any of it video game related? <clears throat> no. Dang. It was Broadway music. There was a Broadway musical one. There was a movie one, I think, and there was some general knowledge one, which was, we were all terrible at. Which were you best at? Oh, the Broadway musical one. Even though we still got, we were all like, yeah, we got all these. And we're like, we only got four of the 15 right. <laughs> and we were we were convinced. And my mom especially, she was like, oh, yeah, that's that's uh, Chicago or that's Is, blah, blah, blah. Isn't it funny when you uh, succeed heavily in a topic that's so niche, but when you have general knowledge, you're like, Meh. yeah, Yeah, right? It's like, I can't even <laughs> answer this. It's like, yeah, go gotta, me. Uh, anyway, but, um, besides trivia. So besides trivia, I didn't have a lot of time to play games, but I mean, I did on the flights and, you know, in the evenings when there wasn't really much going on, we were tired or whatever. I spent a shocking amount of time playing uh, my PS Vita. Nice. Oddly enough. And I brought my 3DS along as well because I had Ocarina of Time on there that I've never played. Still haven't really played it. I'm just up to the first dungeon-ish thing, which is what, the Deku Tree and that. Uh, I haven't done much more than that. But I did pick up the God of War uh, 1 and 2 series like and those are pack. original ps3 games right those are originally ps2 Two games. so you have the ps2 ones not the ones that they released on ps2 well these are the remastered versions i'm pretty sure that these are the ones they re-released on ps3 on the vita nice okay. so so god of war 1 and god of war 2 not the psp titles correct no that was chains of olympus no, and ghost of and sparta yes correct. no those okay. i've never played i really want to though um but i love god of war the god of war games are those are my that's my kind of game where you just Stringing together combos and slicing the crap out of things. Um, I think beat em up is too tame of a genre for God of War. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Slice them up. It's more like, yeah. Slice the demons. Um, but it played so well. It That's looks awesome. great. It plays great. And it was awesome because I get to take my favorite kind of games anywhere I want. And my my hands didn't get tired. Nothing felt weird. The touch panel on the back of the PS Vita, which when I first heard the Vita was coming out, and it's got this weird touch panel on the back. I'm like, that's eh, just You're weird. like, why? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, there were a couple of odd presses that I hit at the wrong time and triggered a, a, a scene or something that I'd already done. But overall, it worked really well. The touch screen itself works really well for certain things. Um, so yeah, I spent a lot of time on my Vita playing God of War 1. I'm almost finished with it, I'm pretty sure. And also Persona 4. Nice the gold edition or whatever it is because persona five just came out and everybody's losing their collective minds over that. Yeah, everyone's I've not mm-hmm. heard anything bad about that. And I'm, I think unfortunately I don't think it's necessarily a game. I'm like, I want to play it just because everyone's saying how amazing it is. And I mean, it's scoring in the, like the high nineties, but I don't think it's really a game I'm going to like. So can you, I don't know. Can you explain these a little bit? For so me? it's just, it's a turn-based RPG. So, yeah, set in like, a, but like it's a set, high school like, setting. Yeah, and so in this one, you're the new kid in town. He moved to this little town called Inaba, where it's just he's going to school. He, you're following him on his first day, and there's a news reporter who was having an affair with some high-ranking political official. Nice. She's found hanging from a light pole in the middle of town, okay. dead, <clears throat> and. Everybody thinks that's weird, and you're playing this high school kid who's trying to fit in as the new kid and find his way in town, and all of a sudden now there's these murders, and the guy, his uncle, I believe, is the police chief or something, or a detective. But you fight monsters, right? You do. And no magic. Yo, no. Nah. So what you do is you collect your... Yo, no. Nah. Yeah, no, no, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> you collect your personas, which the persona is the shadow world version of... Parts of your psyche or parts of your personality or something. Yeah, yeah. I just got to the point yeah, where yeah, I collected yeah. my first one or two. Sure. Um, so I'm still learning that. But there is a separate shadow world that you go into via television screens in this in Persona 4. Four. And it's real weird. And it's really Japanese. It, it, like, it, it's Japanese so... AF. It is so weird it sounds like and see and but that's the other side of this i'm like it sounds real strange maybe i'd really like this i don't know oh it's cool it's fun because yeah. like and then you you still have to do things like you still have to go to class you have to interact with students to gain 
popularity or friendship yeah. or take tests to raise your knowledge and stuff like that. Like there's stuff to do in both. Well, and like suite. five, and I don't, I can't speak for four, but five's actually set like. It happens in real time, like each day is actually a day. So it's a similar ish mechanic from what I can tell. It's not real time, but, it's not you, real are, time, but like, you are working on yeah, a calendar. Today is April 8th, and tomorrow yeah. will be April 9th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you are working on a daily before. calendar, weekly calendar. Yes. It sounds like a Final Fantasy meets Bully. Yeah. Meets like. Oh, that makes sense. Um, I don't know. It, all yeah. I know is that five's like. 80 to 120 hours, and I don't know if I'm ever going to have 80 to 120 hours to... Uh, <clears throat> Skyrim. To, I mean, I'm pretty sure yeah. you've got time. Well, no, Rocket like, League. but Skyrim was, like, back before I did this, and right. <laughs> I was trying to play 48 different games a week. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, um, I was I, in college when I was playing Skyrim, so I didn't really have responsibilities. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, life. Um, but if you've got a Vita and you've never played Persona, or if you've even got a... I no think, one has a Vita, Adam. Well, yeah, I know at least one other person. My brother, who just I know one other person. I'm ignoring him. Well, he if he hasn't played, or if anybody's got a Vita, or if even if you've got access to a PS2, definitely check it out because it's a cool, it's a cool game. Or just get Persona Five because I don't think they're all drastically different because they all yeah, follow the same kind, kind of, of idea thing. Yeah, sounds fun. Um, um, yes, I find it real funny that it took them to release the Nintendo Switch for you to buy a PS Vita. <laughs> right. <laughs> Well, actually, that's not <laughs> what it was. But... That do you know what do you know what it was that made me buy the PS Vita? You found it real cheap. No, so well, that was that was the defining thing. It helped when I was down at BetaCon and I was talking to Ragtag Studio for Raise the Dead, and she said they're releasing for the PS Vita and something oh. blah blah blah. And I said, oh, it's really great to hear the Pita the, the Pita. I did it again. <laughs> I love Pita. Don't talk though. about food right now. Right? I'm real hungry. Um, that the Vita's still getting love, and she was like, oh yeah, I love my Vita. Blah 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 blah. So I was like, maybe I should check it out because yeah. that definitely looks like the kind of game you want to carry around. Well, and then I, I found. I, I was talking to my brother about it the other day, and like, I mean, obviously he loves it and is a big pusher, but oh, yeah. you know, to me it's kind of dumb that every single month I'm getting two free Vita games with PS Plus, and I just have to like pretend they, they you don't. Know, I can't. Yeah, like <laughs> just go. Trade in one of those Benjamins for a PS. I know, right? Have more games to play. You'll have more games in your library that you won't play. Yeah, Mm -hmm. exactly. (laughs) More, more, more things to not play. Speaking of, I bought another humble bundle today because that's what I do, and I just passed six hundred. Oh God! Um, Before we get into that, I was just going to ask about that. So in my hand. Ooh, that's so exciting. I know. I'm really excited. Uh, if you, I'm sure you saw the post on Facebook. I posted that I purchased uh, Little Nightmares, the sixth edition. Which six is the name of the character you play in Little Nightmares? It's amazing looking. It's so cool. It's like amazing. I'm super excited. Um, Apparently, it's getting received pretty well too. Really, yeah, really good reviews. Yeah, really, really good I had, reviews. I didn't even heard of this. Well, I remember I was until you told us you pre-ordered it. Yeah, yeah. No, I'd I heard of it. I pre-ordered it but... on a whim because it was thirty bucks. Like this, like how the much is the edition. non-collector's edition? I want to say it's I, thirty bucks. <laughs> it's like it was like twenty-eight or something. Because I weird. just want the little figure. I can't remember. Yeah, twenty bucks on Steam. Okay. Um, yeah, I got it on Amazon. I saw it. I was like, well, that looks interesting. And then I watched a single trailer for it and immediately thought the comparisons are already being drawn to inside yep. in Limbo. Um, so that's what it reminded me of. And I remembered how much right then that I loved inside. So I took a gamble and it seems like it's playing off. I still are paying off. Um, I still haven't opened the box. And as we know, Adam has some problems with opening collector's editions of things. He might, he's going to have to buy a second copy of this game. I don't understand. But it looks fun. That's way cool. And I'll have, I'll record some video. I'm very excited to hear about that next week. I'll send you the video since you do our video YouTube Perfect. stuff. I don't know how to do all that That's fancy right. schmancy shish. Figure it out. Is it so. kind of ironic that it's pretty unanimous that all gamers love Inside? I, it's, I don't know if I've ever talked, like I've talked to a lot of people who, are like, wow, Inside was weird. Or like, I don't get the <laughs> ending of Inside. I'm like, of yes. course you don't. No one does. Um, but God, it's such a good yeah. game. I think it was just because it was so polished. Like, everything in that game was perfect. The controls And trying were to kill perfect. you. And trying to kill you. <laughs> the controls were perfect. The sound was perfect. The movement was perfect. The story was really weird, but very yeah. interesting. I mean. And when I played it, I didn't, I wasn't able to get Steam or whatever to recognize my controller and to map yeah. everything correctly. So I played that literally with my left hand on a keyboard, oh, all of geez. it. I did all of it with my left That's hand rough. on a keyboard, yeah. and I yeah. still man, and I finished it Such in a, a respectable game. amount of time, yeah. and I really if, liked if, it. If you missed it, we actually gave away a copy of that. Probably by the time you're listening to this, it's already been gone. Sorry. Oh, is it done? Uh, well, it ends <clears throat> the day this comes out. So, well, it, you can if you if you have not entered and you're listening to this on Thursday, you still have a chance. Do it right now. Yeah, it's real good. 
So, but that's what and I yeah I haven't played Little Nightmares yet, but I'm going to crack that open. If you're listening to this Thursday, I opened it uh, roughly f- 32 hours, 36 hours ago. Nah, maybe roughly. Maybe we're actually yeah. going to talk about that uh, with uh, with Zelda in a second. It's an interesting statistic. And you can get Little Nightmares on Amazon if you have Prime for twenty eight dollars right now. Twenty eight dollars or yeah, the collector's yeah. edition. Yeah, yeah, do it. So it is, it's it's a deal. Yeah, and I didn't realize it was such a big studio. Bandai, Nam- Bandai Namco. It's good stuff. They made stuff. They made definitely made they stuff. Did they have a stuff. museum. Really? I don't know, but there's a game called Namco Museum. Oh, you're right. Oh. <laughs> retro games. I'm, gonna, I'm hiding this jokes all over this episode. Try to find them all. Not good ones, though. <laughs> uh, that's He's not. hiding bad jokes all over Ooh, this episode. It's PS4 Pro enhanced. Ooh. I think they already missed one of them. Oh, so. and I can remote play with my Vita. <laughs> wow. I love Sony. Yeah, okay. good stuff. What are you playing? I am not playing much, actually. I've been really busy. Um, and my brother's in town, so I have not been playing a ton. Um, Go home. No, nah, he should stay here. I like him. <laughs> uh, I played the Prey demo, which is the new... Uh, game coming out from Bethesda. It was published by Bethesda. It was made by, man, I'm going to say Arcane, but that's just kind of me guessing. Mm-hmm. So, and completely the, unrelated to the other Prey. Yeah, yeah. So game if you played was the, of the Xbox 360 came out generation. like five years ago, and it was this weird kind of like Native American role playing thing. You die, you go to the spirit world, kill some ghosts, and then you come back and yeah. get resurrected. And you I never heard about die. that. Yeah, yeah. It's and, a cool uh, game. Yeah, and it has nothing to do is with it that. Spelled the same. Yes. And, oh, okay. the, and the reason why they did it is Bethesda was making or publishing this new game, and they're like, we need a name for it. And they're like, what about Prey? And they're like, oh, well, we already own that, and it's all copyright <laughs> cleared. It's all trademark cleared. We wouldn't have to do anything, so why don't we just name this new game Prey? Like, no one played the old one, so it's fine. I um, hate that. I absolutely hate that. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Right? I was excited because I thought it was going to be a new and version it, of that. Yeah. And it, so they released a, a – the game actually may be out now, or it's going to be out, like, this week. Um, but they released a one-hour demo of it um, last week, and I played through – Almost all of it. I actually played for an hour and didn't finish it. So I, maybe it's an hour and fifteen hour and fifteen minutes, depending on how slow you are. But the the concept of the game is you wake up in your bedroom and uh, you kind of you have a voicemail from your brother, like, "Hey, congratulations! It's your first day at work. Like, get dressed." And then there's a helicopter on the roof waiting to take you to work. And you live in this gorgeous I apartment. I want to go to work on a helicopter. Right? I know. Yeah. That's what I was like, man, if I could f- ride to work in a helicopter, I could get here in like five minutes instead right. of my 45 minute to an hour commute every day. That'd be dope. Um, and I'd stop and get you on the way. But uh, I bought a bike yesterday, so I'm going to be riding my bike. Perfect. It's almost point. like riding a helicopter. <laughs> um, but a uh, yeah, it'll be good. Um, but anyway, so you get on the, the helicopter and, and you go to your first day at work, and they're like, okay, we just want to run some, you know, you work for this weird, mysterious, like, research corporation that your parents started and your brother appears to be in charge of. And he's like, hey, we just want to do some first-day tests. And so you go into this first room and do a test, and the scientists seem really confused because it's not working. And then they send you to the next room, and they're really confused because it's not working. And you go to the third room. It's not working. The fourth room, they're, okay, just, you know, answer these questions. And all of a sudden, one of the coffee cups on the table turns into this horrible monster and murders one of the scientists. And you black out and like kind of everything's all weird from it. You wake up in your own bed again. And it's the exact same thing that you were 10 minutes ago when you woke up. And you're like, what's going on? But everything like things are a little bit wrong. And you kind of, you know, are they wrong or are they different? Both. Okay. Um, And you walk out into the hallway and the lady who'd been fixing like some plumbing or something out there is dead. And you walk down, you know, to where the helicopter was, and all of a sudden you're on a sound stage, and you realize what's been happening is that your brother has been experimenting with this like alien DNA implants, and every time they put one in you, you get superpowers, and every time they take it out, you lose all of your memory. Everything that's happened since they put it in, you lose those memories. And so literally your own brother has been experimenting on you every day and you live a day and then they pull it out and then you start that day over and your entire life is actually taking place on a sound stage inside a laboratory. And so like the, the helicopter you flew in in is just a fake helicopter that they've green screened and it looked to you like it was real and your room is a set and everything that's been happening. And so, but now these aliens that they've been experimenting with have gotten out and oh. they're called mimics 
and like in their alien form. Do they, they not have an original name for anything no. in this game? <laughs> um, <laughs> they look kind of like these weird, like four legged. They almost like sketched. Like if you drew them with a pencil, they're mm-hmm. real fluid. But their power, I guess, is that they can turn into anything. And so, like any object in the game world you pick up might be an object or it might be a mimic that's going to attack you so you get real paranoid about what you're picking up and you know that coat rack behind you oh crap that might be a mimic (laughs) and so there's a lot i mean there are definitely like kind of jump scary like ah kind of stuff um but that's kind of where the the at least as far as i got into the demo ends where you're trying to break out of this office that you know they've been keeping you in and experimenting on you it's really like i don't know how the full game is going to be in the demo like the the great part of the demo is the story is really good. It's really it's a really interesting, unique concept. Um, but the the fighting so far appeared to be really bad. Like I've played, like I said, played for an hour, and like my weapon so far is literally a giant wrench, um, <laughs> which it doesn't the, still so, better than a branch, right? Yeah, it's way better than a branch. It didn't break either. It's a wrench. <laughs> um, it just the combat didn't feel very good, which is right. unfortunate. So yeah, maybe it'll get cleaned yeah, up before but, it's. Well, and I think more is just world. like I needed a gun. I really needed a gun, frankly. So, um, and I got like this kind of glue gun. But it didn't work very well. I don't know. Like I said, arts it, and craftsing all over the place, it, right? Um, it, it shot like you know, like expandable foam. And so the idea was you could shoot the mimics with it, and they'd like foam into place, and then you beat them to death with a wrench. But mostly, I'd shoot like it, and I'd hit stuff. you know, like the desk in front of me, and then I'd shoot the plant in front of me, and then I'd get stuck in it. And, <laughs> I don't know. It's interesting, though. I have a half-hour <clears throat> gameplay video of that posted, so cool. it's interesting. Um, I played No Man's Sky for the first time, too. For the first time. For the very first time, which is interesting. Um, in a world where... In a world where... In a world. Um, Astroneer and Subnautica did not exist, No Man's Sky would be a very interesting game. I was going to um, ask how the comparisons to Astroneer are probably... It is not. Astro is a way better game. Astroneer, like, I just mean like genre wise. Yeah. Or, or s- very similar. The I- idea. Yeah. I mean like the, <clears throat> the No Man's Sky is gorgeous. It's so pretty. And I love the generated worlds and I loved everything. But I didn't love that you have to like find rocks to power your thing that you need to do everything. So you've got this like kind of zapper or lasery thing mm-hmm. that you use to absorb, you know, to mine for ore that you need to complete your other quest. And it runs out of power. And then you have to like go hit other things to get carbon to power. I'm like, well, that's dumb. And Astroneer kind of has a this... giant supply of carbon available to yourself. That yeah, but, you don't but then out. to mine carbon, it takes power. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> Carbon's everywhere. It is. And I don't disagree. Um, but like Astroneer kind of get around, got around that by... You, it has the same concept. You have this kind of vacuum gun that sucks up stuff, but it's solar powered. So like all you have to do uh, is like wait a couple seconds and it'll refill. And then you can get like solar panels for your backpack that make it fill faster and you know that kind of thing. So like it just seemed like a better... Better concept, but then like it was so weird to me that they're like, okay, so collect a few things, and now the next thing we want you to do is walk eight minutes that way. <laughs> I'm like, but why? Because like, there's a thing over you, there. You do. I'm like, is there anything in the between there and there? They're like, no, maybe some yeah. stuff that'll kill you. And then you walk there, and they're like, so what do I do now? They're like, oh, you walk back. I'm like, who <laughs> thought this was like a good opening quest? And so I only played honestly. I played like maybe 25 minutes of it. Um, you do not get your 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 ship up and running because you don't have to walk clear across the planet to get your ship up and running. You can get all of that in kind of the area where you're well, at. No, but yeah, I mean, but to get your ship up and running, one of the things you need is like an eight minute walk away. And then you have to walk back. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Yeah, it was just like, like what a dumb first like, that part. <laughs> gameplay thing. Um, and I've heard more than one person complain about it. It was just like, why? Yeah. But my brother wanted to see No Man's Sky, and I kind of wanted to see it too. So yeah, we, we it played it for fun. a half hour. And like, it's not bad. And I think I'll probably play it again because I'm really interested in some of the other stuff about it. But I'm almost kind of disappointed. I started out in, I think, easy mode. And there's like a super casual creative mode that I think is going to be kind of mm-hmm. more Minecraft. And there's a permadeath mode. Yeah, and I'm not going to play that ever. No. Um, don't. But uh, the creative mode sounds kind of interesting. But like I said, like I enjoyed the first half hour of Astroneer and Subnautica way more than I enjoyed the first half hour of No Man's Sky. Right. So I'm not going to hate on it because I think there's something there. It just wasn't. It's a very good game. I really enjoy it to um, kind of zone out. Yeah. And just take in the, the, the landscapes and the lights and the pretty and the, the flora and the fauna and the ships and the flying around and the basics of that. Like, you it's should a very really, relaxing game. You should really try Subnautica because I think you have it because it's very oh, yeah. much sure like that just underwater. Cool. Um, Astroneer, I think, is a little bit different in that Astroneer is like 
your resource in Astroneer is oxygen. Mm. And so if you go too far from your, your home base, you asphyxiate. And so you have to spend a lot of time like tenting out oxygen lines to different places. So it's a little, it's a little less zen and a little right. more like, hey, I'm building stuff. But it's, <laughs> I think it's probably, it's a great game. So but Subnautica this, is super chill. How's this other game you're playing? Because I've always been so, curious. I'm going to try really hard to say it right the first time. And then after that, I can't promise I'll ever say it right again. Um, I'm playing near. Automata? Yes, near Automata. Yeah. And most of the time I want to say it like automata. Like if I if I look <laughs> at it and try and read it, like it, it's just automata. Anyway, um, I've played maybe five or six hours of it. And is that all? Yeah. It's, I'm rolling my eyes because that's to me is a lot of time to spend on a game you just started playing. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I got it like last Thursday. Um, <laughs> it's really fun. Like, I really, really, really like it. And I, but the, the weird thing about it is people are like, what kind of game is it? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> um, like, playing this game, I have no understanding at all how they have a game engine that can be a, like, overhead, like, bullet hell shoot 'em up and a, like, side scrolling platformer and an overhead, um, like, you know, like twin stick shooter Mm -hmm. and a third person shooter. And the game literally does every single one of those things in the first 15 minutes. Holy crap. Yeah. It drops you in to this game and you start out as like, so the, the plot of it is, is that you are a robot um, created by humans. So in, I want to say like the, like 3000 years in the future, um, Aliens invaded the Earth and built these machines that then killed most of humanity, and then humanity survived by escaping and going to the moon. And then when they got to the moon, they made androids to go fight the machines that live on Earth. And so your first mission is, hey, we're flying to Earth in these, like, Voltron, (laughs) like, you know, space space shoot airplane <laughs> things that transform into robots. And, you know, so you start out the game and you're literally flying and it's like an old school, like shoot 'em up bullet hell game. And, you know, you're fighting all these things that are shooting at you. And then, and, and that the entire thing is like twin stick too, if you want it to be like, I'm playing it on easy mode. So you have this like robot pal that's with you all the time and he'll lit, you can either play it where you're doing like combat ninja stuff with a sword and controlling him with your like, second stick to make him shoot or you can just say hey buddy shoot stuff uh, which uh, is what i did because i'm just not that good um, i only have two hands yeah i'm not nearly coordinated enough to do it but it seems like one of those games that if you're really into that like probably dark soulsy uh bayonetta e kind of you know i know all these combo moves and have three hands and can <laughs> you know whatever you're probably way younger than i am too uh, you can and probably, the mutant if you have three hands, right. but who's counting? You could probably really enjoy it. I was like, hey, little <laughs> robot buddy, shoot for me. But then, so you're flying, and then all of a sudden they're like, hey, asking permission to change into robot form. And all of a sudden, then they're robots. And they, like, transform, and then you're shooting other things. And then, you know, you land on the ground, and, and it's like a top-down twin-stick shooter. And then you fight these, like, ginormous boss characters that are, I mean, you know, if you're a this girl android who's, you know, five feet tall, the robots are a hundred feet tall. <gasps> um, it's so absolutely strange. Um, and it's a Square Enix game. And it's it? a Square Enix game. Is there any role playing element to it, it at all? Yes. It, you, oh. you level up, you gather things. It's all quest based. So like, I mean, it's literally, like, they're like, we don't know what genre of a game we want to make. So let's just, let's make, just make all of them. <laughs> but I mean, you'll literally be in your own base. Um, like kind of on earth, there's this, this resistance base that you fight out of. And the entire base is, a th- over the shoulder third person view and you'll be walking and then all of a sudden you walk through this door and all of a sudden it's a it's a platformer you're you're you know you're walking so on cord it's so strange cool. um i really wanted to check it out it's really fun the combat's really really good um and on the mode i'm playing like it feels you feel like the most powerful thing on the planet because you've got this awesome robot guy who's shooting mm-hmm. stuff you have this like guy who comes with you who also does all these crazy martial arts moves and he's mm. got a robot that shoots for him and I don't know like the only complaints I would have about it is that sometimes it's like too stylized right. um, you're like I need to hop on this ladder and so she'll do this like I'm, you know no one just steps onto a ladder in this game they like backflip onto the ladder <laughs> and like sometimes the animation will like 
go do weird things and she'll kind of like backflip on a ladder and then and back up on the platform and then backflip on a ladder and then back up or I need to get off this ladder. Well, no one gets off a ladder. You hop and fly <laughs> backflip off to it and do the splits in the air before you do it and it won't work. And so that's kind of kind of cheesy. And like the the game has a, a reason for every single thing in it. So you can literally sell your like primary CPU in the game to get extra money. You can sell but your you health bar but you die. You can sell your health bar if you don't want to know how much it is, and you can make some money off of it. it you know, it has all these reasons why these things exist. You can, uh, you can only save in certain parts of the game, and it, it literally, like, I mean, the tutorial is like, there is no auto save. This is how you save. Remember, there is no auto save. <laughs> um, and the reason is, is because your save is not you saving the game; it's you uploading your consciousness back to the ship. Because if you die, they just like print out a new body of you and put your consciousness back into it. So, oh, okay. I mean, that's kind of cool. And, and so, but there's all these things, but there's no explanation why 3000 years into the future, they're like, Hey, we need robots to go fight these, you know, this insane evil, but you know what? They should really be hot girls wearing like completely <laughs> stupid clothes that like every time you climb up a ladder, all you see is their butt in a thong and yeah. like it's so gratuitous it is so gratuitous there's absolutely like hashtag japanese right but it like it plays right. like it plays like a game that's 15 years old because no other game in the world would do that now um <laughs> it's real ridiculous and the dlc for it is absolutely worse um like the dlc that just came out today i think you can for some reason you can fight the president of square enix and you can fight the president of platinum games uh-huh. um it's it's got to be a platinum game game but then like the new outfits for your character are literally like the worst of like i don't know frederick's hollywood lingerie it's just <laughs> like come on it's 2017 nice. this is silly um but it's a, it's super fun it's real fun cool i've yeah, been curious try to check it out can at you some repeat point. all of that no cuz I'm lost. Yeah, it's real weird. That was, it's so, you've got to play that was a lot. That was a lot. I think you it, just have to play it. You do. To, to yeah. I mean, the thing is, I've heard that what I just said, I've heard it from like four or five other people. Like, it's weird. And it's so weird. But it's it's real fun. It's real cool. fun. Anyway. All right. So, um, Nintendo Switch has been doing quite well. <laughs> quite, quite well. Yes. Like to the point where people were saying it was doing poorly because you couldn't buy them the second week. Well, that's because there were none, none to buy. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, yeah. So, news. News. News, news, news. Do your thing. News, news, news. There it is. On oh, the news a, network. <laughs> I like it. Uh, so what have they sold so far? A lot. <laughs> um, I mean, like literally, internationally, 2.74 million switches have been sold, just over a million in the U.S., and I think that's literally every single one they've made. Um, like Adam was saying earlier, there there's rumors that they're not putting these on ships and shipping them over. They're putting them on planes and flying them over yeah, to get so they them can here get faster. Them where they need to go, because people want to buy these things. You know, they, there was a big announce last week that, oh, hey, they're going to be at Amazon. Oh, hey, they're going to be at GameStop. And they were for like an hour. <laughs> so if, it's if crazy. they're putting them on planes to kind of speed up the process, that kind of nullifies the idea that it's Nintendo's fault. Like, they're doing all they can oh, yeah. to push the units. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. we always want to be like, Nintendo, why are you doing this? And it's like, well... No, we're all we're buying them all. Yeah, and right. they're pushing them out as fast as they can. Yeah, I think they were conservative in their initial estimates yeah. of how many they're going to make that's why because they're catch yeah, up now. they didn't want to get burned like they did with the Wii U. Um, I mean, that's that's a, a very crazy thing to say. Is that the Switch has been out now for three months? Not even quite three months, right? When did it come out? March third. Okay, oh. so three months, almost exactly. Um, it'll be two three months. months. No, two months. Two, two months. Oh, two months. Two months yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Um, or two yesterday, yesterday, if you're listening to this. Um, Tomorrow's yesterday's today. Yeah. And that means that they've sold almost a quarter. I mean, not quite, but if if you round up and say they've sold three million switches, which is you know a little high, they only sold thirteen million Wii U's. So they've sold. A quarter as many, or you know, maybe a fifth as many right. switches in the first two months as they did the Wii U across its entire lifetime. Which was what five years, four years? It's got to be Something a couple like of years. That? Yeah. So I mean, that's crazy to think. But Nintendo right now is is holding fast to we're going to sell as many switches as we did Wii Wii's, which is a hundred million units. I mean, they're off to a pretty good start. I would think. It happen. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. And, you know, there's so many good games coming out for this, too. Um, I find it... In, what's that? 
Go ahead. Oh, no. Go ahead, because I was getting ready to start talking about the next thing. Oh, here. I was going to get ready to oh, start do talking it. about the new, next thing. Why don't one of you talk about the next thing? Uh, but how many copies of Breath of the Wild did they sell Ooh, a good in setup. the same amount right. of time? So 2.74 million Switches, and they've sold 2.76 million <laughs> Breath of the Wilds. For Switch. For the Switch. Not and this is not Wii counting titles. Wii U. This is that for is, the Switch. So they've that sold... That number is, yes, more. So there's 102% no, that's, attach that rate. Was, that's not Wii and Switch sales no. of the game combined? Nope. Really? So what? 102%... Of PlayStation or of Switch owners have brought Breath of the Wild, and and so they actually asked um, Reggie, guy that's the head of Nintendo. Sure. I don't remember what his last name is. It's hyphenated and it's weird. Um, <laughs> that's why, not a lie. like how that right how that happened happened, and he's like, well, you know, we we think that some people are just, or I'm sorry, my opinion is that. People are buying it that can't get the game, that can't get the system. I want to make sure I have this when I get my Switch, and so right. I buy it when I see it. Yeah. Um, especially in the first couple, I mean, you. how long did you own it for before you owned a Switch? Three weeks? Uh, oh, at yeah. least. Yeah. I mean, yeah. almost a month, yeah. Yeah. And so I think people did that, but what Reggie said is that they think people are buying their Adam. They bought the super special fancy deluxe edition, but didn't want to play that one. And so they bought a standard edition to go with it. I've I've never done that with a game. I haven't done that with a game. I've only done that with the Amiibos. Yet. Well, and I haven't, I've, I've never bought more than one copy of anything. Do it, Adam. Open that, open up that little nightmares right now. Okay, he did it. He did it. He like, broke have, the seal. I have no problem opening this because I'm going to play this. Um, I'm not but I mean, I think that's enough. a, f- yeah, a, a but fair But the people are, are buying it as collectibles. And so... Or what also people were doing, because I was standing in line and there were guys that were like, well, I'm waiting on my Switch to get delivered with Zelda tomorrow. And I'm like, well, why are you waiting in line to buy it if you're going to have it tomorrow by noon? Yeah. Well, I want to play it tonight. So there were people buying multiple copies of a game. Yeah. Or or multiple systems because they hadn't gotten their yep. one they pre-ordered yet. Yeah. And you so, know that some of those people are like, because I, I can totally see myself doing that. You where, did. Uh, I guess that is true. <laughs> I'm like, that's why he had Breath of the yeah, Wild yeah, yeah. three weeks before he had a yeah, Switch yeah. because you bought, I bought two I, copies. Yeah. Of it. So it's people like that yeah. that I think skewed that number and then up. Just, up when, yeah, I could totally see myself like doing that and not returning it though yeah. because I'm dumb. Well, um, I found out I wasn't going to get Mario Kart the day it came out from Amazon, yeah. so I canceled my order and, and picked it. one up at Target. Yeah. But it's crazy. Um, but just a couple other games. I mean, like we were saying, Mario Kart, I mean, it's been out for four, four days, days now. And it's already um, – and this is – I was believe their launch day number. Yeah, 459,000 oh, copies on launch day. And I think that shipped, not sold, um, which, okay. is, which is a weird way of saying things. But, I mean, that means that – there's a you know almost a half million of these things in the wild. So, and that's U.S. numbers. So that's a half million copies in the U.S. So 55 percent of people, or yeah, well, a little less than 50 percent of people that own a Switch in the United States bought Mario, which is crazy. Well, and all the other numbers for everything too. I mean, it's like it looks like everybody in the U.S. who bought a Switch also bought one two Switch. I think one two Switch. Those might be international <laughs> numbers, but either way, that's not a good game, and it's sold. Or it's not a great game. It's not a bad game, but it's not a great game. It's not a game. And it sold a, a million down. copies. Like, it's crazy. Bomberman sold a half million copies. And they, they're like, oh, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, Snipper Clips, which is like a small downloadable game, which is real fun if you don't have it, um, has sold 350,000 digital. It's all, that's all digital. It's crazy. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean people are numbers. snapping these games up and snapping switches up every single time they find them. And Adam just opened his little nightmares thing, and the little figure that comes with it is the most so adorable cool. thing I've ever seen. That's real cool. Yeah, completely unrelated to the I like that a lot. Stuff. I put him up there by Yosh. Oh, we got stuff. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so Nintendo's doing well. Nintendo's doing really, to really sum well. To TLDR, <laughs> Nintendo's doing well. So? So, let's talk about uh, Call of Duty World War II. That's something you'll never hear us say very often. No. Let's talk about Call of Duty. That name yeah. is real clever. It is, right? <laughs> yeah. What else are you going to call it? I've never heard of a game called Call of Duty. Right? Ever. Yeah, it's new. They and I don't, do, do, you guys, do you guys play yeah. Call of Duty at all? No, I want to play. What was the other one that just came? Battlefield. Battlefield. I want Battlefield One. I want to play that. Me one. too. That's what I want to play. Do you? But do you want to play? Is it because you want to play the single player? Oh, I just want to play it because it's World War One. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's I'm interested that in that too. That's yeah. why I want to play it. And I want to play the single player, but have no interest in the multiplayer. Yeah. Um, but this and this is kind of the same thing for me. Is like I really, I'm really interested in this. It's it's a you know they've Call of Duty. I think the last one like. 
you, you are essentially a superhero. Um, like they've gotten yes. away from any sort of actual realistic warfare, and now it's in space with lasers, and you can wall run and double jump, and and I think it's real dumb. Yeah, it's it's totally not my thing, and like the online portion of it is a thousand times not my thing, um, because I just don't need to spend all day Bunch playing of online yelling at yeah. each other. Shoot the damn I thing. hate jetpacks. Once you add a jetpack into a multiplayer setting, I'm oh. I'm. Oh, oh, but it comes Except in, so in Battlefront. Handy. Battle, I love jetpacks like, in like like Battlefront. It comes in so handy in Destiny. Yeah, and they're really cool in Destiny, too. <laughs> <laughs> Real cool. Anyway. <laughs> uh, sorry. But yeah, I but, like I, but I think the thing is, is, I get what you're saying, though, in a game that's supposed to be like a relatively real combat game. And I think, yeah. I guess that's the other argument, too. Like, they're real cool in fantasy space games, but yeah. like... For a game that started off I have a really hard time reality. believing that... A jetpack in real life would like I, I can't imagine the army right now is like you know what we need jetpacks like it seems like you know they're trying it you it just seems like are. a good way to get like up in the air and then have people shoot you like I, right unless well, they I, have a cloak of invisibility I, that's what we also need I just feel it's kind of you spend all this time developing these really great multiplayer maps and then you just have people flying in the air yeah like that's dumb I get it um just have like if a game had a aerial mode where well, it's just people flying around kind of like lawbreakers the new three-dimensional space it's like cool yeah. but lawbreakers does that which is the new kind of overwatchy esque game um being put out by uh cliffy b like it has a um like an anti-gravity section of it where you can do these incredible jump stuff but the, the levels are designed around yeah. that mechanic so yeah i don't know um anyway it's it's gonna be the single player is going to be Apparently, ninety ninety percent of the five percent of the single player, you're going to play a single character. Um, he's a like fresh recruit. He's nineteen, and the first thing he does is you know storms the beach of Normandy, and you'll play as that character for the entire thing. It sounds real fun. It's supposed to be very realistic World War Two, um, and not necessarily like. Like, hey, look at how cool World War, World War II was, but look like, how gritty. absolutely horrifying yeah. World War II was. Kind of like, I mean, Battlefield 1 started out the same way, where, you know, you played the, the first demo of that, and it just killed you over and over again and told you who you were and how old you were, and, you know, that you essentially just killed, you know, you are a real person and you died. Jeez. And that millions of real people died, and that World, you know, war, as much as we kind of glorify it as a, you know, an amazing thing that happened in the past, you know, the great war that it's awful. And yeah. that hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people just died. And, uh, it's, it seems like this is kind of going that same, same way. Um, but unlike battlefield, it's going to be a single person fighting multiple places, um, for most of the game. Um, of course it's going to have multiplayer. Of course it's going to have a zombie mode. Um, Oh, is this the series that has the zombie mode yeah, yeah, yeah. thing? Okay, yeah. see, I don't. That's how far removed I am from these series that I don't even. I know there's a zombie mode in the game. I just yeah. didn't know which series. Yeah, and I've played. I've played a couple of them, but it's really not my jam. Um, I think the last one I played in a sort of serious way was Modern Warfare Two, yeah. and it's been years. That's the last one I played like but, kind of seriously because that I felt that was a strong multiplayer yeah, it's game. Good. After that. I kind of yeah, and I don't know it. if I've ever played any of the multiplayer after like I literally I think the last I don't even know if it was Call of Duty but I remember the 1942 was that Call of Duty 1942 or Battlefield 1942 Battlefield, Battlefield 1942 I mean that was long ten That's years long. ago fifteen years ago um, I played both of I played that a lot um, but not since then and but I'm interested in this I think World War II is a like it's a part of history that I'm very interested mm-hmm. in um, they've obviously visited this setting many, many times in just the Call of Duty franchise. Yeah, they just haven't done it in 10 years, uh, so yeah. I think um, it'll be fun to see. Um, but, uh, still one of my favorite scenes, levels, missions in all of video games is from Call of Duty 2, when you do, in fact, storm the beaches of Normandy. Yeah. So I, I felt like that was a really cool sequence in a game. Um, so I I think this could be fun. Yeah, I'm excited to see it. It's If you pre-purchase it, I believe you can get into... A closed beta. Um, I don't think I'll do that, but uh, <laughs> definitely a game I'm going to check out once it once it comes out. So, so I think this next thing might excite those of us who've played Breath of the Wild more than the five hours I've put into it. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Yeah, so Breath of the Wild is getting its first DLC, and mm-hmm. my understanding of this is that there is no you can't piecemeal buy their DLC. You have to buy the like twenty dollars season pass for Breath of the Wild, but it's not terrible. Um, 
Oh, it's oh, see, I thought it was twenty dollars per pack. It's twenty dollars for the whole. I believe, yeah, thing. it's a season pass. It's twenty dollars. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so this is called the Master Trials DLC, mm-hmm. and in it you get uh, the Trial of the Sword, um, which is a thing, and then the game's new hard mode. If the game wasn't hard enough for you, um, a thing mm. called the Hero's Path mode, a travel medallion. Is the pronunciation of this is it a Korok mask? Korok, yeah. There you go, and eight pieces of new equipment. Um. And so the Trial of the Sword is uh, a 45-room thing that Link must travel through and defeat all the enemies going room for room. You start out with without any armor or weapons, and you have to work your way through it. Oh, it's kind of like the uh, the trial on the island in yeah. the far south eastern corner of the map, I want to say, I somewhere like that, so. where you get on the island and you're stripped of all your stuff, and then you have to be... The, the the challenges yeah. on that island. So it sounds yep. similar to that. Yeah, but if you can beat this, you get um, the Master Sword always in its glowing, powered-up state. I will be getting this. Yeah, so it seems like, like that, that could be handy. Yes. Um, there's a hard mode where everything is, I know you're going to find this hard to believe, but harder. So that's so weird. Yeah. Um, and fluff you, mode. Yeah, right. That's what I, I need an easier <laughs> mode. Like, Cliff's real dumb. Can we have an easier mode? Um, so... Players will recover health. You'll find harder enemies in places where you hadn't found them before. Um, you know. Yeah, and yeah. So yeah, you said players will re- regain health. Oh, I'm sorry. Enemies. enemies will regain health. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's different. That Very would actually different. be That's an exactly easier what mode. I don't want in this game. Right? Yeah. I, <laughs> I. Every time I hear people like, I'm just not that gamer. I wish I was. I wish I was that guy who like, well, I beat it the first time on hard, and then I went back through and played it on nightmare. Like, never. Nope. Like, never going to do be that. that guy. I never mm-hmm. ever need to do that. But to those of you that are, hard mode. So that'll be nice. Um, the Hero's Path no. mode sounds yeah. really interesting. Um, it keeps track of your last 200 hours of gameplay. And apparently this includes if you're, if you're the time you've played before buying the DLC. So Adam's played 50 hours of DLC, or of the game now. He buys this thing. It'll so keep it's track. magically going to populate everywhere I've currently been? Yeah, and so you can actually... Um, you'll see a green path on your map showing where you've been. So, I mean, I think it'll be really cool to be able to see where you've been, where you haven't been. And then apparently you can rewind to previous points, too. What? So, yeah, it sounds pretty cool. Wait, rewind to previous points? Like, oh, like rewind or fast travel? I, I, well, it says... Uh, you can slide through a timeline to track footsteps from a specific time. So oh, okay. maybe, so maybe you can't actually go back to it. Um, it it's kind of an interesting idea. I'm not exactly That's sure. Weird. I wonder if it's like standing outside of like the time space continuum, looking at your character moving around. Yeah, I don't know. It sounds interesting though. I think it'd be really like I love that idea of being game. able to see where you've been in a game that's so interestingly open world. Like, so because- here's now. I've not had any issues with DLC ever. I don't have issues. For some reason, that kind of irks the crap out of me because there is obviously something that is currently in place tracking that it has been. been doing this entire time that I now have to pay yeah. to unlock. unlock. That kind of irritates yeah. me. I'm still going to do it. I mean, on the but, flip side, maybe it was just maybe it's just part of the game that they keep track of where you are and where you've been. I mean, they probably have to. I mean, you kind of clear out. Well, there's no real fog of war in that game either, though. Yeah, so, I, I don't know. I, that if I were Nintendo, I would not be touting that as part of the DLC. I would just be like, "Oh, just by the way, that later. this this also hey. happened. Don't don't focus on yeah, that yeah. in your in your press stuff." Yeah, interesting kind of though. Um, then you'll get a travel medallion, which um, essentially creates a fast travel point from where you are. So you can say, "I want to go from here to any other point, mm-hmm. and then back to it." Um, and you can have up to one of those registered at any time. And then um, the Korok mask will make it easier to find Koroks. And I don't know what that those is. Are the seeds, right? Yeah, Koroks are the children of the forest, little leaf people. <laughs> so I found my first one of those the other day. when I, yeah. My brother <laughs> wanted to see Breath of the Wild, and so yeah. I loaded up. We were playing it, and he was playing, and he found our first one. It was under a rock. We're so excited. And so then he shot it in the face with an arrow. Yeah, <laughs> and like, all, Yeah, I didn't like it. No, but, but it there's was, 900 of those in the game. It made me giggle, though. There's 900 of those That's to silly. I'm, you, not gonna, I'm gonna try to not find one of them. <laughs> you're gonna have a really, really, really rough time. How, I, how many because, have you found? So I found, I think I'm close to a hundred. Wow. Is there? Um, do you get anything from finding them? When that's how you expand your inventory slots. That's oh. how you expand your your bows and arrows or sure. your bow Which slots. Which is only important because you want to carry one million weapons because they break. <laughs> exactly. You do. You do. But once you've got that master sword. 
You only need to make sure you got that one. And then if you can get power it up all the time with this. That'd be cool. That's going to make me so, so happy. Because I still won't even need game. an inventory. And it will I mean, all be silly. You, sir, are just negative Nancy. I don't know. The more I talk about this game, I feel like it has a well, lot of you don't, huge flaws. You don't have to flaws. play it. Be careful. That's a, that's, those are fighting words. For, people are going to show up at your house. Yeah. Nah, yeah. I don't know I about that. Because this game's a 10, apparently. Yeah, it's a 10. It doesn't mean it's perfect. It just means it's better than everything else. Um, I mean. Well, it's supposed to mean it's perfect. No, that is no one thinks a ten out of ten means a game's perfect. But then, what happens if a game is perfect? There's no what such you, thing. What do you call it? <laughs> it gets an eleven. Then you have to pull. But it. then you just ruin the and whole. And then you're scale just like, well, I am the scale done. you've had for your this entire lifetime. No, 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 is no, 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 no. It's, you just pull in Spinal Tap. They fix it. <laughs> anyway, oh, uh, man. there is another DLC pack coming out uh, this summer. So that is just the first round. So for twenty bucks, that actually sounds like a pretty dang good deal, to be honest. Adam's yawning. Excuse me. Sorry. Yeah. I'm still doing that jet lag thing. Well, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Going to Florida is rough. Uh-huh. Yeah. Coming back is even rougher. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, so that's that's that. I think that's cool. That's very cool. I'm going to get it. I'm ready for it. So yeah. I'm just, I'm going to just I don't, purchase actually, the I thing. Actually, I guess I should say when that comes out. I don't know what the release I think it is. comes out in mid to late June. That's a little while from now. Oh, so maybe this. The first DLC comes out, I want to say in mid, mid to that's late. That's next month. Yeah, that's next month. Oh, man. How did that happen? Where does it say? Does it say in here? Oh, no. It is... No exact release date. I'm sorry. I I actually read that wrong. The second DLC pack is going to come this holiday season. This comes summer 2017. Yeah. So So soonish. It's It's almost summer. Uh, Sweet. So tell me about this Player Unknown's Battlegrounds game. What is this? So this is a game that a ton of people that listen have... Written in, written in, written in, scribed, Twittered in, scribed. and said like, oh my gosh, you guys need to buy this. And I am like, have been real tempted to, but it's in early access and it's 30 bucks, which is not, uh, it's not expensive, but I think I'm going to be real terrible at it. So spending $30 is kind of like, eh, it's on sale today for 24 though. So maybe I'll pick it up. Um, it is a, a game. It's a battle royale game. Um, Similar to H1Z1. Is I was going to say H1Z1, yeah, yeah, yeah. or That's I what... think DayZ has a uh, a mod like this. But this is built, I believe, I believe on the Arma engine. Um, not the Lega engine? Not the Lega engine. Ooh, badoomching. <laughs> um, and the entire idea is it's very Hunger Games-esque where you... Uh, and a 99 of your closest friends parachute into a level and you have to scramble for whatever weapons you can find and kill the other 99 people. Um, And then the map shrinks as time goes on. So you get close, like you can't just like hide under a rock and wait for everyone to kill each other. The map gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And if you're, if you don't, when the map shrinks, if you don't get out of the shrunken area, um, you die. And there's random artillery that, you know, shoots. And so, you you know, it, the game keeps you moving. And I hear they're pretty fast paced and, and they don't take forever, but it goes from 100 people down to one. And the person that wins is number one. Um, it has not been out very long and it is literally like everywhere. I mean, every podcast I listen to, they're talking about it. It's being Twitch streamed like crazy. Um, and they just sold 2 million copies of it. So, uh, it looks really interesting. Um, I just haven't haven't given it a try yet, but it's crazy how how big this game is, and it's in early access, and it's done by like people you've never heard of before. Um, hmm. I think the guy who did it is a modder, um, like he did mod stuff for Arma, but uh, you know, no real studio behind it, and it's it's apparently really good and really polished. Um, even though it's still in early access. So it's, it's something to, if, if that sounds like your jam, like I said, it sounds really fun. I'm just sure I'm going to be terrible at it. <laughs> um, but I mean, literally two or three people have written in saying like, you need to try this. So it sounds like your thing uh, might be fun to check out. It might be fun for us to all hop in with some, some uh, folks that do play it that listen to. So well, cause you know. I'd always seen the H1Z1. H1Z1. Yeah. I'd, I'd seen that. And I remember seeing that on actually on Twitch and I'm like, what is this game? And I watch where people like basically drop in. Yeah. Standing outside this big gate or whatever, and then they're in this town, and they're all scrambling for weapons, and I followed it for a little bit, and I thought it was a really cool kind of a thing. Yeah. And uh, that was, I want to say I started checking that out right when we started doing this podcast. Yeah. It's, it's one of those, like I said, it's a game mode that I think I would really like, but never excel at, so I don't know how long I'd play it. Yeah. But uh, definitely something fun. to take a look at if it's, it sounds like your jam. Um, finally, we're going to go back to Nintendo. That's weird. Right? <laughs> and I'm talking about the actual headline I'm reading, not that we're going back to Nintendo. Yes. So, like, just 
out of the blue last week, like no lead up, no pre-announcements, no leaks, which I mean, I don't think happens ever anymore. Mm-hmm. Like, Not even at the Nintendo Direct? Right, yeah. yeah. They didn't even Nothing. talk about it there. Nintendo just said like, oh, hey, yeah, by the way, we're making a new 2DS XL and it's coming out in July. Like, I mean, it was almost that amount of like, oh, yeah, hey, we've got this, you know, I know we just launched a new system like two months ago and we had that little NES Mini thing that we did. And, oh, but hey, there's this new oh. DS and it's awesome and... You know, if you guys remember the original 2DS, it was that weird, like, non-folding brick of I a actually DS. bought one. Did you really? Yeah, I did, because I was like, yeah. They're real cheap, I, though. They're like 100 yeah, bucks. Yeah, like, well, when I got it, I got, I think I had some credits or something at GameStop, and I was like, I used that a couple of trade-ins. I got it for, like, 60 bucks. Yeah, it, so it's I crazy. Know, what did I do with that? He lost it. I really don't know what I did. Yeah, but... You know, so the the deal with this, though, is it's going to be the exact same screen size and have the same specs as the new 3DS XL, um, which is relatively new. Um, but it's going to cost years. like $100 less. Yeah. So this thing's going to be 150 bucks, which means that if you own a 3DS XL and you don't care about, especially if you own one of the old 3DSs. That's so, what I've got. I've got yeah. one of the old ones. And like you may not know this, you may not care, but if you have one of the old 3DSs, it can't play an SNES games off the virtual oh, console. Oh, yeah. I talked is, about that yeah, a couple of shows ago. Real dumb. Um, like a lot of people I know have been kind of burned by that. So, but this new one will be able to. So if you have one of those, you can get, I mean, I looked into it today and they're giving like $70 in trading credit for that. So trade in your old one, get a new one for 80 bucks. And I've comes got the out. limited edition 3DS XL with Mario and Luigi on it. It's the silver one with Mario and Luigi. It's probably worth 85 bucks. I mean, it could be worth like, you know, 72, 72, 73, maybe. Um, but this comes out July 28th and it was just like, Oh, Hey, yeah, we got this thing. And it's going to play everything, and it's going to do it real fast, and it's going to look real good. And uh, I mean, it seems like it seems like there's no reason not to buy it if you're a, a DS fan. And I mean, like we were talking two episodes ago, there's ten new games coming out for the 3DS, like and in the all next Kirby. four months. <laughs> yeah, and there's three of them are Kirby. <laughs> but I mean, this is a system that they're not going to let die. There's a lot. There's a lot still, you know, happening. And it here. should be noted too that because the one thing I was curious about, you said new 2DS XL, and I'm like, oh crap, how are they going to make that weird slab oh, thing? Oh yeah, they it, did it bigger? folds too. I'm like, Fine why chills. would they do that? Because it was so <laughs> awkward to hold to begin it's with. The size of a phone book now. Yeah, yeah no, it, it folds just like the 3DS. Yeah, so. it's a clamshell. It looks real nice. It looks yeah. real nice. I actually really like the aesthetic. Design looks really good. I but when we were talking before the we started recording or maybe we were recording and whatever, um I actually enjoy the 3D on the 3DS because it's you don't require any special equipment. When it's done well, it's done or when it's done right, it's done well. well yeah. Um and it really does add to the game. Like I could not imagine playing Super Mario 3D World without or, 3D. Or yeah, without the 3D in the game just because it helps so yeah. much, and like, and both Dylan and I were like, "Who cares?" I, the first time, the, every time I load one, because my kid will play it with the 3D on, and like the mm-hmm. second I pick up a DS, I just switch that off. I don't so like it at all. Th- what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to end up getting the 3DS, the new 3DS, so you can play so I can Nintendo play, games. Since it's the exact same insides, and yep. the only difference is the screen, I'm probably just going to pony up that extra fifty bucks for the for the 3D. Yeah, and just do it if it if it indeed doesn't drop in price. Is it is it extra? Five? I thought they were two fifty. Uh, well, I could be wrong then. I thought they were two. I could be wrong. I don't know. I've, it's I don't price DS games all the time. Or DS, <laughs> this, this, this. But regardless, I like the way the I like the way the new TDS looks. The the look the way it looks like it feels. Yeah, it looks like it feels like nice. some texturized stuff. Yeah, it and, looks really good. And like the new 3DS XL, we have more buttons, right? So there's a new C stick oh, and two C-stick. extra shoulder buttons. Oh, fancy. So there's just more controls. So I hope it actually... has the dedicated screenshot button like the uh, Switch. The Switch does. I love that. Well, I doubt they'll do that for the no, 2DS. No, probably not. There's probably not a lot of reason to have a, a screenshot button on the 2DS, yeah. but I like the idea of it. Right. Interesting. Thanks, Nintendo. Going to get more of my money. All right. Somehow. I, th- I think it is time for Dylan to do his um, Vinny intro. Hey, Vinny. <laughs> I love it. What are you doing? God, that's awful. Uh, but Vinny really likes it, so I know. What do we I do? keep seeing the messages in the post on Facebook. He really, he's really into it. Yeah. He's a superstar. <laughs> anyway, Vinny's uh. question for this week is a good one. I really like this, actually. What game do you really like, or did you really like, but it's kind of embarrassing? Have you ever been embarrassed by a game you really enjoy? 
Well, and it goes back, yeah. There was a game we talked about. I can't remember what it was, what 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 topic it was, but I'm pretty sure it was an answer to one of his, and it was Hot Shots Golf. Like, <laughs> that's I, not embarrassing. I it's I well, it's embarrassing to the level you loved Hot Shots I Golf. I love. I mean, I will play it for hours. I will still play it for hours. I will go out and buy a copy. I was looking for what Hot Shots Golf games they had available for the Vita because <laughs> I really really like it. And I'd remember I would start dating somebody, or or somebody would come over, or hang out, or whatever, and they're like, "Oh, you've got a PS2. What games are you playing?" And I'm like. Hot shots, shots golf. <laughs> like, oh, you you want to play a couple rounds? <laughs> no? Okay. Well, oh, you're leaving. Okay. Bye. All right. I'll just eat this pizza alone and play hot shots golf with this two liter of Mountain Dew. It's fine. And my cat. There's nothing wrong with that. I nothing mean, nothing wrong at all. It was a good majority of my early 20s. But it's whatever. <laughs> I love it. I'm lonely. Uh, um, but yeah, so I wouldn't say that it was embarrassing. Now that it's embarrassing now, but at the time it was definitely kind of was like I'm trying to put the moves on and impress these these guys, and nope, <laughs> they're like hot shots golf. That's not how you get there. So not I don't, know. I don't know if that's ever no. worked for anyone. Honestly, no. like I like video games. They're like oh, it's a bogey. Oh, no, it, it, video games were fine. It, okay, it was it just was hot the shots fact golf. I was playing hot shots golf. I love that. Like oh, you're not even playing PGA Tour or Tiger Woods does or EA yeah. this or blah. But nope, you're playing no, hot, hot shots, shots golf. Yeah. And I'm out. That's so funny. <laughs> you hot shots golf pig. I don't know what that was. Dylan, how about you, man? Are you like you embarrassed by anything you play? I don't know. Not. I mean, people might think like I'm. I'm trying to think of what other yeah, people yeah. might think. So, because I don't care what you think. No, I don't. I'll put what I want. <laughs> um, what she gets. <laughs> but I know Dead or Alive gets a lot of flack. But, well, yeah, well, obviously. I, um, if you hadn't brought that up, I was going to bring it up. <laughs> so those fighting games, uh, I remember because um, they had the Dead or Alive 3 demo on the Xbox, yeah, so yeah. the first Xbox, and me and my buddies played that quite a bit. And for a... Bouncing triangles. Um, <laughs> yeah. And the, those games have always had graphics a little bit ahead of the curve, yeah. which is the good thing when is it comes to that. Is that um, Yes. Yes. Oh, oh, I see. oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, but for a 3D fighting simulator, I thought it was pretty easy to play sure. um, compared to some of the more punishing fighting games. So, um, cleavage aside, it's can, can it's I, a solid, um, solid fighting game. Yeah, it's but, super. Um, and my understanding is the volleyball one is the best volleyball simulator available. It is a available good volleyball on. simulator. So, <laughs> As my brother I mean, pointed out the other day, he's like, it's the only one. Of course, it's the exactly. best. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, if you, didn't, if you didn't follow that, then the joke's on you. But um, no, I think, The joke's on me. <laughs> um, yeah, we didn't try to compete with, like, we Volleyball, did they? I don't think so. It'd be kind of... We volleyball. The me's are pretty hot. Wait, was there a we volleyball? No, no that's, the, that's oh, I'm like, what? I'm what? <laughs> he got really excited. He's like, can we play it no, now? No, I would not get um. really excited because I don't. I was one of the few that didn't really care for the Wii sports. It was, it was what it was. Yeah, it was but, fun. It was casual. It was cool. Yeah. So does that embarrass you then? No, not really. Yeah. It should. But, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I just fighting games are too hard. So like the one fighting game that I played just had to be the pervy one, right? Like, <laughs> there you go. What's this dumb? That's not fair. It's not his fault. <laughs> Team Ninja. They made Ninja Gaiden. That's a like hardcore game. Why doesn't? Why can't I play Dead or Alive? <laughs> then and, and, and Dead or Alive is a completely different hardcore. <laughs> I remember when I worked at Software, etc. I went to every year. You had to go to this managers conference. And, you were a manager. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, I know, right? Scary. Um, it was. I was real young. They should not have given us to work. I was nineteen. It was real dumb. Um, but we had to go to this manager conference, and, and one of the things you did there, like literally, when you went, you brought an extra suitcase, and you'd pack one inside the other because you'd come home with so many demos. Like I got a free PlayStation when I was there. It was great. Um, but one of the things we got was the the original, like before it was released, the Dead or Alive demo. And I just remember loading that up and going like. Oh, this is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I'm embarrassed to play this. <clears throat> I, maybe Dylan isn't embarrassed to play it. I was embarrassed to play this. Right. So, um, I think the game that I really liked but is kind of embarrassing is um, there's a game. It was like a an MMO, I'm going to say, in 2002, so about 15 years ago. It was called Toontown. And it oh, was – do you remember I that? I remember that. I don't think I played it. It was it, made by Disney. And but didn't really feature a lot of Disney characters, as I recall. But it was it was their attempt at making a like kid friendly online game. You couldn't talk. You could only communicate via like what I would now call like almost emoticons. Um, but like 
I'm a huge Disney fan, so we downloaded it and tried it out. And I was unemployed at the time. I was I was in between jobs and so like I started playing it and then my wife wanted to try it with and so this is back like I didn't have high speed internet at the time. So we actually like got a splitter and I was broke because I was unemployed. So we had a free Juno account and oh we actually my. like sp- like I actually figured out how to like network my dial up internet to my wife's computer so we could both play it together. But then I got my brother to play it with me and I got my friend Mitch to play it with me and we'd like stay up until three o'clock in the morning at night playing Playing this really dumb, like <laughs> really made for kids mm-hmm. MMO where you're fighting robots. And I mean, like literally the fighting was like, all right, I'm going to drop an anvil in that one. And you hit that one in the pie with a face. And <laughs> it was so silly, but it was so like it could only exist in that exact time. Like I got a job and I don't think we played it again, but we played it for probably three or four months. Like wow. nearly That's every amazing. night. And it was so fun. But again, like I could, there, even if that game, I, there's actually a guy right now who's trying to like recreate that game. Cause you know, Disney just like shuttered it at some point and is trying to like recreate it. And I'm like, it's really cool, but I can't go back in and play that again. Like it doesn't, it doesn't work. It only existed in that, that you know that very small time period. Yeah. So, <laughs> Toontown was great. But did you ever play RuneScape or anything like that? I, uh, I don't think so. Because I never played that, but I had a bunch of people. That must have just been a younger. Yeah, I played a couple of like early MMOs, but not like it was pretty much. I played Star Wars Galaxies. And I played WoW like ten years ago, and there was another one that I played. And I just I can never remember the name of it. I think it still exists too. Uh, this weird kind of future sci-fi robot one um, was terrible. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, it's MMOs are like heroin to me. I can't really <laughs> dip too hard into mm-hmm. them. Um, it's not embarrassing. I, I thought of something else. Uh, it's not embarrassing that I played it because I'm pretty sure everybody under the sun has played Candy Crush. Oh, it, it, so, I barely have. I've played like a couple levels. It's yeah, really not but my everybody's thing. played it. So it's not embarrassing that I played it. It's embarrassing that I actually spent money on it. Oh, yeah. how, how? What's your highest level? I you know? ha- I couldn't tell you because at the time I was like, I just need five more moves to finish this level. I'll pay <laughs> 99 cents, whatever. Um, and then I got made fun of. We were in Vegas and it was Kevin and I's first like trip. Yeah. On a vacation somewhere with a group of people. And I'm sitting there on that double decker bus in Vegas playing Candy Crush. And I was like, oh, I'll just pay for the blah, blah, blah. And he's uh-huh. like, You're not paying for it, are you? And I'm like, eh, It's 99 cents. And the girl just sitting there on the bus, You're paying for Candy Crush? <laughs> <laughs> and she starts laughing at me really loud on the bus. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm very intrigued by people that will pay. The like, pay to play I, thing? I, yeah, it's not my thing at all. Um, but I mean, like, I, I think. Or who's telling me like that they've put like seventy five or hundred dollars into that Clash of Clans game, oh, yeah, and I'm like, like it's just it's something that I'm. It's so not the kind of game I play, but you know, more power yeah. to you. I mean, I guess the thing is, is you know, how much how much money do I spend a month on video games? Exactly. Like, it's, you know, I did it. I paid to play, yeah. and uh, paid two when bucks Google, for Candy Crush is. Yeah. And then when Google had their class action re- refund, every, I've got it all back. Oh, that's so hilarious. It, it is what it is. Excellent. It's question. What are we doing? We are answering a question from Ryan T. Now, this dude is, I think, actually the first person who actually asked us a question on Twitter. So he has a special place in our collective podcasting hearts. That T stands for Twitter. Yes. Ryan Twitter. It doesn't. It's actually his last name. His last name is really not Twitter. It's not. (laughs) Okay. Uh, He says, if you could only play two games, one online and one offline for a year, so January 1 to December 31st, what two games would you pick? If it were September, Destiny 2. Yeah. I would play I know I'll play that. And but if it weren't if it weren't December um or September, yeah, which let's is assume not, let's say assume you're starting January 1st, 2018. Uh Destiny 2. Yes. And that would be my online game. My offline game it's really really hard to say because well, no. Uh I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. Zelda. Well, that's the thing. If it was if it were 2017, then yes, I'd say Zelda. Yeah. Well, but, that's okay though. I mean, you know. Yeah. Theoretically, it could be Zelda. Theoretically, it could be Zelda. Yeah. Because there's so much to do, mm-hmm. and I would have something to do basically for an entire year. Yeah, that's fair. At least. Yeah. Um. But so, but if it's an offline game, could be does anything. that mean you don't get access to the DLC? No. Let's assume you can get the DLC. Okay. Then yeah. If let's let's say Zelda. And Destiny 2 were out at the same time. Ish. 
Those would be, I, your those would be my games. Yeah, I think it's very that, difficult. I think those are hypotheticals within a hypothetical. I here. know. He actually guessed what he thought we would pick, and I don't have those right here. But I think that's actually where are they? I think that's oh, this actually is, this, that's fun. I like this way better now. I think that. <laughs> let me pull it up. I, I think like, that's what Adam's he actually. I think that's what he actually guessed. I would choose. So yeah, uh, no. Close. So mine's actually his. His online would be Destiny, and his offline would be harder. Um, I'm gonna skip. Not say that for now. Uh, he did not actually guess for you, Adam. I apologize. His offline game would be what? Uh, it's. I'm gonna skip it because I. It's the same one that I would pick. Oh. So, what are you, Dylan? <sighs> um. Woo-hoo. Oh, I see. I see what he did. Okay. I'm thinking for an offline game, still, yeah. it might have to be. Grand Theft Auto. Ooh, good choice. Five. The, the, the GTA could be your online and your offline yeah. choice. You could just I've one. still never really played GTA yeah, online. There's it's, a lot of content there. Um, but I think that's really the... What idea. would your online choice be? Overwatch, I think. Excellent. Uh, See, and I, Overwatch would not be mine. Like, I think I would get... Maybe, I would get burned on that. Yeah, I would too. Most it would have quick. to be some of more content. Uh... I think for me, my online choice would probably be, I, I'm actually leaning towards Destiny um, or Destiny 2, whichever one we're, whichever time we're living in. Um, it would be a, a solid backed up against uh, World of Warcraft, though, um, just because that's, oh, no. it's so big, though. Like, I mean, World of Warcraft plus, like, what, four or five expansions. I love that game. Um, I think I could really enjoy that. But Destiny, I think, might be nice because it's kind of shootery and my... And I think my offline choice would probably be The Witcher 3 with the expansion. See, I need to play that. I yeah, I've played that. it enough of it to know that I like it. And, I mean, with the expansion, it's like probably 150, 160 hours worth of content. So it would keep me keep me busy. Um, but I think but I think Destiny would be a, like a good counterpoint to that. Mm-hmm. Um, I was trying to decide if it would be Destiny or The, the Division. Yeah. Um, I'm not, that's a hard... I, I, I've been playing both of them a lot lately. Mm-hmm. And I like both of them for different reasons but i i think that i might like destiny slightly more than i like the division um it seems it come that one comes off as just a little more polished and a little more everything just kind of fits well, just i just right. i, I kind of like the like destiny <clears throat> just feels very like i feel very powerful in destiny um like the kind of run and gun no cover like because so much of, of the division is cover based where you're like okay i'm gonna go hide against this thing and kind of shoot over my head and then i'm gonna go hide against this other thing like even when you have cool stuff i feel kind of like my entire game is like me being kind of fragile and, mm. and vulnerable. Um, and oftentimes that game, I feel like I'm getting shot even though I'm behind cover and, you know, whatever. Whereas in Destiny, like, it's so cool to be fighting, like, some cool bad guy with a shield and, like, you'll, you know, because I play it with my brother and my kid and, you know, like, they'll be taking the front and I'll go, like, you know, around back and sneak behind a guy and, like, just blast him in the back with a shotgun and then, you know, they can take him down because his shield goes down. Like, it just, I don't know, the game feels a lot more... Like I, I come out of some of those battles just like right, this is this is awesome, and I feel like really like adrenaline, adrenaline, uh, full of adrenaline. That's what I'm going for. Adrenalized, adrenalized. Yeah, I don't know what word. Adrenalized. I, was, I, I think that's. A I thing. don't know what word I was trying to make up there, but whatever. <laughs> so I, I think I think for me, I would probably choose Destiny One slash Destiny Two, and and probably The Witcher Three. He thought I would pick Rocket League. And I can't believe you didn't pick Rocket League. Rocket League and I are on a break right now. The thing is, um, but you've played Rocket League yeah. only for a year. Yeah, <laughs> right. I think, right. That's, <laughs> I think that's the reality. Is I've played Rocket League six to eight hours a week for the last fifteen, sixteen months, and so like you know, we. And that's the thing is, like, I look at that, I'm like, God, I should be so much better than I am, right? Um, yeah. I'm really not. <laughs> it's it's kind of sad. Yeah. So, uh, but I, like I said, I, I've not played Rocket League in like almost two weeks now. Yeah. So, see, to me, Overwatch is the only game I think I've actually played for a year or longer. Yeah, because I've been playing it since it came out a year ago. I don't think I can really say that about any other online. I game. like Overwatch, but I just I don't think there's enough content to keep me interested. And like, I find their community to be gross. So, Overwatch, yeah, kind of. But, Sorry, I was taking a picture of six. It's okay. <laughs> so anyway, I think that's a great question. I, I like that a lot. Thanks, Ryan. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to talk cheap free stuff? I mean, enough about me. Enough of always. Enough Hi, about yo. Adam. Uh, there's some cheap great oh. PS Plus stuff coming out this month. Um, probably <laughs> one of my favorite games of last year is on this list. So uh, PS4, Tales from the Borderlands, which I have not played, but I hear is absolutely fantastic. See, and I've heard kind of 
Like, if you like the Borderlands games, it's kind of meh, but... No, I don't know. Like, yeah. I was talking... I asked about it the other... Like, probably two weeks ago on... Three, uh, probably a month or two ago on Facebook, and everyone's like, oh my god, yeah, play it. So, okay. I don't know. Cool. Um, so, you may or may not like Borderlands, um, but I've heard good things about it. Um, Alienation... Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's in Europe. Sorry. If you're in Europe, you can play Alienation. Um, to all of our European, European listeners. European listeners. I, that's weird. I didn't know that they had a different set of games in the Europe than they did here. I can't. Have you, so have you ever been to Canada? Yeah, I've been to Canada. have been to Canada. We were there at the same time. Like, we, we, yeah, I was going to say, I've been to Canada This is completely, <laughs> completely random, but it goes to the whole different game in Europe. So we're in Canada for New Year's. Kevin and I and our yeah. friend Justin was staying across from our hotel at yeah. a friend's condo, and we go over there, and he's like, let's just watch Netflix and chill tonight. So we're watching oh, yeah. Netflix. And I'm like, why do you have all these amazing, like, just done with theater releases yeah. on Netflix? I'm like, I didn't see this in my queue at home. Yeah. That's because we were in Canada. Yeah. They like, the com- difference in regions it's completely and stuff different. is nuts. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, at the same time, they, have a, they don't have a lot of stuff we do. And, like, strange stuff like um, Spotify? Like isn't available there? Like ever or oh, yeah. YouTube Red isn't av- like it's weird, it's weird stuff that you just can't. It's just weird. Like when I got YouTube Red, I actually got YouTube Red for my kid when I went to the UK. Um, so he, we, I could dump a bunch of Minecraft stuff on my um, iPad so he could watch it when we were over there. And literally, once you got over there, it didn't exist. If that I hadn't sucks. downloaded it, well, no, I downloaded it to my computer or to my iPads. So it was fine, but right. once we got over there, it just wasn't available. That's crazy. So, but anyway, yeah. yeah, it's weird. Region locking is really weird. Super it's weird. really weird. But um, I'm excited about the other one that's coming. Yes. Yeah, so the other, the one that is actually taking place in this country yes. or North America, so I guess the Canadians are into, is Abzu, which I played last year and adored. I played it, loved it. Yeah. It's it's, did you play Abzu yet? yet? It's 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 about three hours long, and about. there's. I was waiting to get it for free. Yeah, there you go. Um, well, and it's the same way I played Journey. I got Journey for free. It's basically if you've played Journey, it's Journey underwater. Yeah, is exactly what it, it has is. got. It's gorgeous. Mm-hmm. Um, there's not. I, I, I don't even know if I can say there's a story. Like, there's not a story. Like, to I kind of pulled a story out of it. Yeah. Um, but like, I finished the Anakin, and he's like, "What's this story you keep talking about?" I'm like, "Well, you know, the stuff and the things." He's like, uh. well, "That's um, a stretch, but cool." But it's beautiful. the The soundtrack. Um, so the the Austin guy who Winery. composed it is Austin Winery, and the dude is amazing. I love every single thing he's done. He did Journey, he did the Banner Saga games, he did um, Abzu. He's done a bunch of stuff. He guy's a genius. I was so irritated with my Google Play Music too because I downloaded all this music yeah, yeah. to have on the plane, and one of the things I downloaded was the Abzu soundtrack yeah. just because it's so oh, it's good. So chill too. And whenever oh. I went to play it on this trip, it would just sit there. Oh, and nothing sucks. would play, and I would I was screaming ish. In my head at my phone. Huh. Um, yeah, it was terrible. But anyway, the soundtrack's really good. Yeah. Ebbs is good. Go yeah. get it. Play it. I'm probably actually going to replay it because I really want to play it. On my, I played it on the PC last time. I really want to play it on my TV. And see, like, I played it on my PC hooked up to my TV. Yeah. So, but I was only running it just straight up 1080, even though I know my laptop can push 4K. I don't know if that game was I'm put not out sure if Ebbs has a 4K patch or not. That's the thing. It should. But oh. if it's coming out on the PS4, Cross Maybe. your fingers that they optimize it for the PS4 yeah. Pro, and it'll at least well, it upscales it anyway. Yeah, it? it'll no, be, it'll upscale and read. And yeah, down. I don't know. It'll I, it'll look gorgeous regardless. That game's yes. beautiful. I'm very excited. Um, then a bunch of stuff I've never heard of. Um, Blood Knights for the PS3. Um, again, they're still supporting that PS3. Yep. Port Port Royal Three Pirates and Merchants. I don't know anything about it, but I love pirates. I do love so, pirates. Yeah, right. I love merchants. Interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> Scam artists say here. Yeah. Uh, and then for Vita owners like our Adam uh, and my brother. I'm so happy. Um, you get laser Disco Defenders. <laughs> laser Good Disco for you. Defenders. There you go. That's a cross buy with the PS4, so, you know. Um, and then Typewriter, um, which I've actually heard of and I've heard is very good. It's a uh, it's kind of a platformer. It's very clever. Yeah. It's uh, like a platformer that deals with type, oddly enough. <laughs> um, the, the quote that they from uh, Kotaku is you never realized fonts could be this exciting. So I don't know what that means, but I've, I've actually heard very good things about it. It's, it's very like, it has a very positive rating on steam. I've heard good stuff. So that is a, uh, another cross by title. So you get that on uh, PS4 oh. and Vita. So for those of us who don't have a PS Vita, like Adam, um, you need to get with it. Y'all Vita's where know, it's right? at. Anyway, uh, I think we're we're going to end uh, with Dylan's Troll Corner for this week. We skipped it last week because we went to like, I don't know, the podcast was seven hours long. But yeah, long yeah and, I noticed that when I downloaded yeah. it. I'm like, what did these fools talk about for like an hour and 45 minutes? A lot of stuff. And, yeah, and I, I kind of wanted to include 
Um, cause this, this, uh, I had this noted from last week. So, um, cause I have a, a little bit of a discussion to, to ask with part of the new troll corner segment. Nice. Um, anyway, Hanzo mains. Yes. So this is a thing that's on the internet and it's a big joke, right? We, we call see Adam this, one all the time. Uh, we see this Hanzo main thing. Um, and it was really funny. Like when I, like some kid at school. Yeah. You know, I think that's kind of originally where this yeah, called, uh, called from. one of his, his co-students, uh, uh Hanzo main, yeah. Hanzo main. And the teacher didn't know what it was. Yeah. And... Which I mean, that in itself is just absolutely hilarious. But the thing is like, I feel like this is a real thing. Like the more I play overwatch, it's yeah. like Hanzo is for those maybe a little bit unfamiliar with overwatch, like Adam, as he points to his forehead, um, temple. Yeah. You are a temple. temple. That's right. Adam is a temple. Um, Hanzo is a, 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 de- a defensive character in the game. Um, yeah, of course, you can play offensive. the characters. Like that name sounds offensive. It is offensive. Um, anyway, he obviously you can play a character however you want, yeah, yeah. and that that is, I mean, that's what we do when we play games. However, the Hanzo character is he has abilities that allow him to be a good defensive character, as they put him in that class. Sure. So. They kind of do this. What's the word? Um, I, I don't know. Service for us to tell you what characters kind of do, so you don't really oh, have to sure, think yeah. too hard about yeah. it. They, they say, class they people give out. Give them a class. Yeah. Um, anyway, you have a lot of pl- players that want to play Hanzo on offense. Is on he just attack. like a cool-looking character that everybody thinks? Well, is he's got just a bow. Badass. He's got a bow. He oh, does okay. do a lot of damage when you get like a critical or even just hit someone with an arrow. Like he is a very strong character in that way, but. He doesn't really fulfill an attack role very well. He's a well. distraction. Um, and he has this cool ability where you shoot an arrow, arrow and it does this little, like, sonar thing where, like, like, these little waves come out, and you can see through walls. You can see enemies uh, through walls, cool. and your teammates can see those enemies through walls. I mean, that's a really... I mean, that can be a good ability either. Yeah. It's a great ability. But um, a lot of people seem to pick um, him on the attack. But even more so, the specific... Hanzo main experience I'm referring to is someone I was playing a game and someone was really unhappy with the team comp, so they picked Hanzo yeah. to make comp it mean worse. Team composition, yeah, yeah, okay. composition. So and then actually I think my buddy was playing and I was kind of just watching this game, but um, as the game was going on, like kind of and jokingly like, calling this guy out as a Hanzo main, but he's like, no, I only play Hanzo when there's a bad team comp, yeah, and it's like. Well, what are you what are you helping the game by like, I mean, picking a character that you apparently just admitted is a bad choice in this situation because you are unhappy with other people's choices? Like, I mean, it's a very common thread in Overwatch to complain about team composition and then not be willing to switch to something that would make that team composition mm-hmm. better. Um, so. I, just, I don't. This is, this isn't helping yeah. the game. Um, so I, I just kind of wanted to just open that up. So to, my biggest problem with Overwatch as a competitive thing is is that exact concept. Though is that uh, like I was reading about a guy the other day who uh, is a he only plays as Black Widow mm-hmm. um, and loves or to play Widowmaker. A, Widowmaker, sorry, whatever. Um, Widowmaker and only plays her likes to play as a sniper, but she right now the meta doesn't allow for people to play as her um it's it's just it's moved on and so he wants to play as her and will not play as anyone but her which to me is kind of his right as a person that bought this game and wishes to play it but because it is a online game you're expected to make choices that are best for the team and not for you which to me takes a lot of the fun out of i want to play as a character i should get to play what as a character i want team comp aside you know um and i know that that's a terrible thing to say but the problem he's been having lately is that the tools that blizzard has provided for this essentially make it so you can say his problem is he keeps getting reported as you know not as i don't remember what the the actual thing is but you know he's not being a team player right um but the report for that is the same as you report for someone for like saying terrible things over your microphone or and so what keeps happening to him is he keeps getting chat banned yeah. and tech and talk banned and so he'll and the way they work is is you get a 24 hour one and then you get reported again it doubles so you get up to 48 hours and they double they go up to 96 hours and so he keeps getting reported for this and then can't talk anymore which 
is dumb because so much of that game is around talking like and coordinating. It's a team-based and, yeah, game. Yeah, it's a team-based right? game. So he is admittedly maybe not playing as a great team player, but is playing – According to him, to yeah, a game he wants to play and the character that he's best at. Yeah. Um, but because other people don't think he should play that character, and that's that's completely their opinion starting, too. They report him, and then he can't chat anymore. And so he keeps appealing it to Blizzard, saying, like, look at the chat logs. I haven't said anything offensive. I just want to play as this character. And... <clears throat> they are like, well, you know, you're right, but, you know, this is a team game and, you know, it's, you should really probably be playing, you know, as something what someone else wants you to play as. And so I kind of like I understand why the game has to work in that way. But at the same time, like I paid the same amount of money that you did. And just because you want to play as a character that the meta right now says is a right character to play as that makes you more right than me. I don't know if I really want to be involved in a game. And that's, I mean, that's part of the reason I would, I don't play it. And I would probably never play it competitively is that I don't want a game's meta to define what character I can play as. I think that's kind of, kind of dumb. And I, and like I said, it's, it's the reason I don't play it. And so if that's your jam, great, but I don't know if I want a game to define how I play it, not me to find how yeah. I play it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's tricky. I think I, I mean, I really don't like that they can't really cuz there's there's no reason he should be banned for that right there's absolutely no reason because yeah. what if he just excelled so well at that character that it didn't matter yeah. right and that's the idea cuz bastion's another character that is a defensive character but with a good player that is good with bastion he can dominate on but offense. bastion right now too is not is part is not part of the meta yeah it, you know and and was and the funny thing about bastion is he was so when this game was in beta or right after it came out of beta, like Bastion was said to be so overpowered and now people are like, don't even play him. He's not, he's not right. Um, like I said, I, it just seems to me that like, like I said, if that's how you want to play a game, that's great. And, and other, like they had chat logs from other people with this guy that, you know, said he wasn't a great black widow player, but if, if he believes that his best player is Black Widow and doesn't yeah. doesn't want to learn how to play another, or doesn't wish to That's learn how to play another, that's completely his choice. Yeah. yeah, and and so to to make a game that essentially essentially the way Blizzard is set this up right now, and and you know the the customer support people he's chatting with are essentially saying to him, "You've paid for this game and can't play it the way you want to play it because of the game we've created and the the meta around yeah. it." Mm-hmm. Um, it's unfortunate, yeah, but I, I mean it's the game they've made and it's yeah. the game people want to play. And I will play devil's advocate to that for one second saying if you enter the competitive arena i don't maybe you should not pigeon your hole yourself into one character I, because yeah i agree with that it is a class-based game and you cannot say i'm going to be the sniper every game i play yeah, and i totally, that's not fair to other players yeah so, i completely agree and i don't honestly remember this guy was playing competitive or yeah. quick play but I think that the line between those two, um, and I think that part of that is because of professional esports too. Like I saw it a bunch in Rocket League too, where people watch so much Twitch and so much esport stuff that they let those things define how they are going to play and how they think yeah. everyone else should play. And if you don't play like that, you're clearly not good. Yeah. Um, and so, like, I don't, I don't disagree. Like, if if you're going to play competitive, you should. You need to be able to play more than one character. You need character. to play more than one character, and part of that game is switching characters to an, to help your team the most, mm-hmm. um, regardless of who you're good at or what you want to play. Yeah. But I think that that same thing seeps down into quick play really fast. And, yeah. and quick play should be where you go to have fun and screw around after work. Right. Um, or learn a new character. For sure, so you can play them more exactly. efficiently. Exactly, competitive. Um, I was thinking, comparing this to League of Legends, which is a game that has more defined roles because yeah. you kind of stick into lanes, but they implemented this idea that when you go into a game, you say, "I this is my first choice, I want to play top lane. My second choice is I want to play mid lane. And then it tells you what you're going to play. Interesting. Um, so that is an interesting idea, and I think it works really well because it it... You can't go in and instant lock a character because I'm going to play this character oh. and it doesn't matter what the team comp is, I'm playing this character, right? Yeah. So, and that's a really bad attitude to have playing a team game in a competitive atmosphere. It would be very interesting um, to play to, for Overwatch to have a mode that was kind of like how Uprising worked where 
you you know here's a map and here are the five characters or I guess six characters that you can play on this map and every single one of them has to be picked and if you don't pick one we'll assign one to you yeah it'd be like it would have to it couldn't be competitive but it would be very interesting to be able to play quick play that way just like this is who you're gonna be yeah. you know and and you'll learn to get good at them right or a random champion kind yeah. of mode or something like that yeah be interesting um, to see. Because it's hard in a in a game like Overwatch where the meta does kind of change. Because you can't say this the team comp is two tanks. Because you don't have to play that yeah. way. There's well, effective ways to, to play with more or less of a certain class. But. It's crazy to me that there's a game where I have to keep up with the game's meta in order to know which players I can play with that yeah. will be approved by the other people I'm playing with. Yeah, but it, it seems like dumb. But you right? would, you would <laughs> also hope to dumb. be on the team that works together and actually tries to pick a comp yeah. Yeah, rather yeah. than just saying, because some don't play well together. Yeah, like yeah. they're not, their play styles are so different, different that they don't help each other. Yeah. So, I mean, that is part of it. It's a, it's a complicated question. I'd like yeah. to open that up to the listeners. Oh, yeah, so if you play Overwatch, if you play competitive games, like what are some good ideas? Yeah, to, I have a couple friends that play these? Overwatch and I know that they are going to probably not be pleased with <laughs> my <laughs> thoughts on this, but I'd be yeah. interested to hear what they have to But say. I mean, the, the, whether or not you agree with him or not, it's like, but what is the solution? Yeah, Offer yeah. an idea that might help. Because you do have a right to play the character that you want to play. However, if you're playing competitive, you need to somehow yeah. be lifting the players up around you instead of bringing yeah. everyone down. Right. So, yeah. And I think competitive is, is another thing. And I think if you're going to play it, you have to play it the right way. But God, it's, it's such a weird mm-hmm. thing to say. Anywho. I'm curious yeah. about this other part this is of a- our show notes because I'm... What? That's just an honorable mention for the troll corners. Okay. Seattle, Seattle traffic. traffic. <laughs> um, the drivers around here are awful, and they're trolls every day on my way to work. Um, like, I-5 is this big, like, sprawling five-lane freeway um, that I was driving down the other way to go pick like up. Like, ten-way, ten-lane, actually, if you think, because it's yeah, five each sides, way. Yeah. Anyway, I'm in, like, the middle lane, and there's this car, like, behind me and then he shifts over to the right lane to speed up ahead of me and he shifts to the middle to get in front of me and then he's over to the left and then he hits a wall of traffic and then I just keep zooming by and I'm like <laughs> like people they're just weaving all over the place and not getting anywhere and you realize there's hundreds and thousands of cars on the road you're not going to get that far ahead I, I will argue as someone who moved here from other places Seattle drivers are so much better than almost anywhere else I've ever lived yeah, uh, yeah. but like, Seattle drivers I find to be very courteous and are very good at a lot of traffic things oh yeah yeah, Utah drivers so are let's terrible. Not look at LA drivers are that. terrible. I, I, well, yeah. I think terrible drivers exist everywhere. Yeah, yeah. But the more traffic you put them in, the worse it gets. Right? I will oh, say yeah, though yeah, yeah. that the Washington Parkers and Seattle. Well, I'm not even. I'm just gonna say Washington are the worst Parkers of anywhere People I've ever been. People parking their car. Yeah. Are absolutely terrible. Oh, it's absolutely man. terrible. I've so I've lived in St. Louis. I've lived in New Orleans. I've lived in West Palm Beach. Uh, Portland. Uh, Wyoming, which is just a whole different animal because you don't get blocked by cars. You get blocked by cows. Cows. Seriously. Yeah. Um, and then awesome. Seattle. I'm going to say Seattle drivers are, I wouldn't say they're anywhere close to being the best drivers. Yeah. Um, there are worse, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I will say. Yeah. See more more it's me. There's a lot of impatient drivers yes. in a lot of traffic oh, yeah. Our that terrible, are trying though. to get somewhere faster than everyone else, and they're just not going to do mm-hmm. it. And it's yeah. so funny to watch because yeah. you end up passing them. Yeah. There was just dude, staying in the lane. There was yeah. a dude yesterday who kept jumping back and forth between the middle and right and the right lane, back and forth trying to get around these cars. And traffic would slow down, so he'd jump over, and then traffic would slow down, and he'd jump back over. And I'm like, you were behind the same two cars every He's time. Like, <laughs> You're just going back and forth. And finally, I got past him. And I got way past him yeah. because he kept going back and forth, yeah. not able to get around. Yeah. I, the one I hate is people that uh, try – we have – because of the traffic so bad, we often have big backups getting onto freeways. Uh-huh. People that will try and sneak up to the very, 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 very front instead of waiting and try and sneak in. I'm a, I'm, I'm, oh, I I'm hate a, that. You don't I'm do that, a, do you, I'm a defender of that. I've oh. done it before. I've done it before. I will honk at your ass every yeah. time. Oh, they honk at me anyway. Yeah. Um, anyway. However, it's going to be interesting what happens because, like I said, I bought a bicycle. And when I lived in Portland, I didn't have a car for seven years, yeah. and I rode my bike everywhere, and I've been wanting to get back into it. I'll, I'll get back in bike shape. We'll bike to work together. Because I'm into it. I Let's love, do it. I love we'll all meet up it's at some central like, location right? on our bicycles. It's, it's going to be like 100 pounds from now, but we'll... <laughs> I got a better idea. Let's all get bikes, and then we can ride to a location, chain up our bikes, and get on a triple tandem, Ooh. and then ride that to work. That's It'll a terrible be like, You sure are being a troll. Anyway, 
I'm going to go home now. Uh, <laughs> but if you're still here after us talking about biking and traffic, mm-hmm. um, you can follow us on social medias. Yes. Do like, we know what game we're giving away, by the way, next week? I don't know. Okay. Stay tuned. Well, we'll see. But you can find out at our website, bitemepodcast.com. Yep. And you can find us on all the social medias, including YouTube, Yay. Bite Me Podcast. Good stuff. Follow us. Talk to us. Bite me.